This insomnia is going to kill me. I've been waking up every goddamn night, usually around 2.30 a.m. It has something to do with my three-year-old daughter, Sophia, and her imaginary friend, Andy. Sophie's been struggling with potty training, so I keep a monitor in her room so I can get to her before she pisses the bed. Every night for about two weeks, I can hear her babbling softly through the monitor. It's a generic piece of shit, so the quality isn't great. I can never understand what she's saying, but when I get to her room, she's sound asleep. I woke her up a few nights ago and she just started crying, insisting that Andy had been talking into the walkie-talkie. That's what she calls the baby monitor, and she just wanted to go back to sleep. It creeped me the fuck out, and I couldn't fall back to sleep at all that night. Baby monitor was quiet for the remainder, at least. I caught up on some Netflix until the sun came up. My wife told me she'd kill me if I didn't at least try to take care of this sleeping issue. I can't help but roll around in bed and it keeps her up. She never hears the monitor. I tried waking her up once, but as soon as she opened her eyes, the monitor was dead silent. She never was the joking type, and I keep a handgun in the bedside table, so I decided to take her advice and try to get this fixed. The lack of sleep was fraying at our nerves, and we'd been arguing, something we'd never done in the past. Thing is, I loathe doctors. It's a totally irrational feeling, I know, but I can't stand them. I think deep down I'm a bit of a hypochondriac, and I'm afraid of what they might find if they poke and prod enough. I also don't like prescription drugs, but I'm getting desperate. I set up the appointment with Dr. Heiserman. I was hoping he'd be booked so I could forever procrastinate, but they had me in the same day. It was a quick appointment. After the obligatory 20 minute wait, he had halfway listened to the ailments and scribbled an ambient prescription tearing it off and stuffing it into my hand. I was happy enough. No poking, no proding, no terminal diagnosis. I went straight to the drugstore and picked up my bottle of tiny white pills, hoping that my issues would be solved. This brings me to my last night, and it's pretty fucked up. I feel like a lunatic even typing this out because I know it's all wrong, but I need to see what people think. We had decided that maybe the shitty off-brand monitors were picking up some static or feedback, and that's what had been waking me up. I went downtown and grabbed one of the more expensive models. This one comes with a TV screen so you can actually see what's going on. I hit the sack around 9pm. I've never taken anything stronger than the occasional Tylenol PM and didn't know what to expect. I gulp down an ambient and lay my head down on the pillow, asleep within minutes. My eyes shot open and struggled to focus on the digital bedside clock, and you guessed it, 2.30 a.m. I could hear babbling and talking, only now it was very clear and very high quality. It wasn't Sophie. I pressed the power button on the small monitor. The screen turned on with an audible pop and soft buzzing. As it came into focus, I swear to god I saw my daughter's closet door slowly closing. My daughter was clearly in her bed, under the covers. Milky white fingers curled around the wooden door, easing it shut. The fingers slipped back inside and leaving the door open just a crack. I did what any rational adult would do in such a situation. I grabbed my 40 Glock out of the bedside drawer and charged headfirst into my daughter's room, riding the most intense adrenaline dump I've ever felt. I flung the closet door open, immediately cursing my stupidity and lack of foresight as I couldn't see any more than an inch into the inky blackness. I tasted sour bile in my throat as the hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. I'm hoping that it was a combination of the ambient and the crippling fatigue, but I heard something move in that closet. A sort of slithering. It's hard to even describe, but it gives me goosebumps to even think about it. It was fucking disgusting. I fought against the ambient's potent lethargy, as I nearly tripped over my own feet, flinging my hand against the wall to find the light switch. Sophie yelped as I shouted a curse. Finally finding the switch, the room exploded in white brilliance. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt Andy. She was screaming as she pissed the bed. I squinted painfully against a growing headache and ran to the closet. I widely pushed the coats and shirts from side to side with one hand waving the muzzle of the gun around with the other. Wild shadows dance across the closet, but it was empty. Terrifyingly empty. The headache quickly grew to an unmanageable migraine as I saw moisture smudges on the lip of the door, 
as though a clammy hand had been placed against it just moments prior. Those sickly white fingers. I'm not sleeping tonight. I doubt I can. I'm going to sit in Sophie's room and wait for 2.30.